Hey, Temesco Valley, what's going on? This is Matt Hogue, fellow Valley resident. Uh, you might have seen a couple of my videos in the area. I'm starting to do a lot more that's revolving around our community, uh, just in an effort to spread the word around the community of what's going on and happenings. And tonight, we are up at Trilogy. We're actually at the Sequoia Room at the Trilogy Lake Center. We're actually up here for a town hall meeting with Assemblywoman Melissa Melendez. She represents the 67th District, which is our area and includes our little valley. I brought uh, my daughter Taylor along. She's active in ASB at school, so I thought it'd be a fantastic opportunity for her to kind of see how things go on um, in the state legislature and what goes on. You know, she's on a much smaller level at school, but it'd still be uh, something that she could get some valuable lessons from. So we're gonna I'm just gonna document tonight, kind of give you guys some highlights, and uh, hope to uh, I hope to bring you guys some more videos and share what's going on in this valley because there's a lot of good stuff. All right, so Melissa is a naval veteran. She actually served, I believe, in the Cold War. She was a uh, Russian translator for like 10 years. And really tonight is just like an update on the legislature, like what's going on with all the bills and whatnot. She represents, she's down in the lower house. There's two sections of the house. Uh, there's a lower and then upper. The upper is the Senate. And then she's down in the lower. They will do bills. They will put them, put them in a place. They'll vote on bills, trying to get bills going. And then those will go to Governor Jerry Brown's desk for him to sign or veto or whatnot and that's how it goes from there. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, thank you for coming. I hope that there aren't more people that made the mistake, the mistake that I made which was went to the lower building. I want to start off with some housekeeping and first introduce you to my staff. Jared in the back is my chief of staff and he's up in my Sacramento office. Um, Samantha is my district director and she's down here in my Marietta office. So everyone got one of these, right? Let me tell you how this works. Um, I don't give a speech so sorry if you were looking for to one. Um, I give you a legislative update. I don't go over every single bill on here. Uh, and then I open it up to the floor because you may have questions about these bills or other things, comments, whatever it is. This is this is open dialogue. Um, as I tell everyone, this is meant for you to hear from me, but more importantly for me to hear from you. Um, this is how I decide on a lot of votes, you know, how I'm supposed to vote. Uh, most recently, I'll give you an example, was the... Um, changing the school start time to no later than 8.30. And that was one where I struggled with because I have five kids, so I've been down this road. I put it all out there and I asked for people's input and that's how I was able to determine that though most people liked the idea of 8.30 or later start time, they didn't want the legislature to decide that. Um, so I voted no. As it turns out, the bill passed, but the governor vetoed it because he felt like I do, it should be a local decision because every school district now they can change the school start time to anything they want. They can change it to 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, whatever they want. They can do that now. They don't need the state to, to dictate to them. AB 403 was the Legislative Employee Whistleblower Protection Act. I'll be very brief on that. That was a big one, though, this year, and that passed in January. The, the whistleblower bill, what it does is every state employee in California has whistleblower protection. If you work in the Department of Education and your direct report, your supervisor, whoever you work for, or, um, sexually harasses, assaults, something like that, and you report them, you cannot get fired for doing that. He can't say, well, you're trouble, you're out of here. Does anybody have, just, because we can do this open forum right now if you want, does anybody have questions or comments about anything? Yes, sir, in the back. Well, the <laughs> Yeah, so we finally got an audit of the DMV. DMV's got a lot of problems. Um, and I mean, I know that's an understatement, but aside from the fact that the wait times are very long, um, depending on which DMV you go to and depending on what services you're looking to get, but we found, like, I just went through, Jared and I went through and started trying to book appointments at just picking random DMVs. And some of them were, you know, it was December. 
at this point, I don't care who does it, just somebody needs to figure out what's going on in there because this is a train wreck. SB 100 passed. SB 100, which is on the third page, at the very top, requires that California get all of its electricity from renewable sources 100% by the year 2045. So that means it must come from, like, no fossil fuels. It's going to have to come from solar, from wind, I would say hydroelectric dams, but that's not going to happen because they won't let us have those. 2126, which is on page two at the bottom. And we were able to get some more resources for fight for wildfire prevention within the Inland Empire. So that's a good thing, right? So yay. Oh, driving high. You look like a ordinary bunch in here. So this bill would have made, now that we've legalized marijuana, it would have made driving under the influence of marijuana a crime, much like, you know, driving under the influence of alcohol or opioids or anything like that. Um, the governor vetoed this bill. I will say the part of the problem now is we don't have uh, any mechanism to, you know, when you get pulled over for a DUI, they give you the, the breathalyzer, right? Okay, we don't have anything like that for marijuana. The other part of the problem is, well, you know, your, how much TCH, which is the active ingredient marijuana is in your system and yours could vary depending on metabolism, weight, well, I don't know. Overwhelming majority of California voted to legalize it. Many of them maybe because they want it to be legal. Many of them, maybe they thought, well, I don't use it, but heck, tax it, and maybe that'll fill, you know, some of the budget gaps or whatever, which, by the way, we don't have a budget gap right now. We have, what, nine billion now in, sur in surplus? Nine, seven, somewhere around there. Yet they raised your gas tax. In your car registration tax, by the way. It's not just the gas tax. Your, car your vehicle registration would be also in there. That would be on the ballot, by the way, November. It's Prop 6. So if you want to repeal the gas tax, you are to vote yes on Prop 6. They make it a little confusing. You think if you don't like something, you would vote no, yes, right? No, no. Yeah, no means yes, yes means no. I'll tell you what, you've all had a chance to look at this. Um, why don't we just open it up for comments or questions if you have any. If not, we can wrap it up. Um, if you do, by all means, let me hear what you have to say. Uh, just a quick uh, question on that um, 8186 of the meth ends. Do you know if the budget has been... You approved? said that with a straight face. I am so proud of you. You didn't even laugh. Do you know if the budget has been approved for that? So the way this is going to work is they have to... I don't remember the exact dollar amount. They have to raise a certain amount of money, I believe. They have to raise that privately. San Francisco's tax dollars, because it's limited now to San Francisco. Originally, this bill was meant for the entire state, so why do they call them supervised injection sites? I call them meth dens, whatever. Um, so it's now limited to San Francisco. But so when a call is placed for a medical emergency or law enforcement is called because of some type of problem, that's all taxpayer funded services that are going to service um, these injection sites. Yes. So that's where taxpayer money comes in. If this is a state funded or uh, supported, certainly state, state supported. State supported place. And if someone uh, ODs and there's a death, um, would the state then, where does the liability for that death? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> that was my question too. It's 7.30, so I don't want to keep you all here too late. Um, I'm going to, I stick behind for a little bit in case you have any questions you want to talk about one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, but one more thing. Yes. I, I just would like to, maybe if you guys want to join me, give Melissa a round of applause for everything she's done for us. All right, so that's it. That was our first uh, town hall in Temescal uh, that we attended. Uh, these things go on all the time. There's another one coming up in Murrieta. If you guys want to know more about uh, what Melissa has to say, really, it's just a cover. <laughs> she just really covers all the legislative action that's going on in California. So it's not specific to anyone, not specific to any party, but it's just to cast some general knowledge on what's going on and what you should be informed on. Uh, it's good for you to get out here, a little ASB, and kind of figure out, get to learn the, the whole system in California and then uh, hopefully I'll bring you guys some more video and uh, some more updates of events going on around Temesco but for now night guys